Hello, it's Duncan. The owner of the Gilded Rose has asked us to add a feature that will take us some time to complete. We don't want to do the work on a branch with all the merging headaches that that entails. So today we're going to add a feature flag. Our customer has come up with a new story about what the software should do. She wants it to display the price of items. Now it turns out that determining the price of items is really quite complicated with magical goods. So we're going to have to ask some web services to do it for us. Once we have done that, she'd reasonably like us to display the price in the stock list screen. This then is quite a big story, I think. And we'd like to work outside in. We'd like to work from the stock list, adding a price into that, and then going and fetch it from somewhere. That will make sure that we don't do any work at the lower levels that isn't required by the top level, the ability to see the price. So we're left with a problem. We'd like to see the prices so that we can develop the feature, but we don't want to show it in production until it's finished. So let's look at how we might achieve that. On the right then, we have the handlebars template for our stock list view. And what we want to be able to do is add things to this and have them render conditionally. And handlebars has an if. So if we were to put in a price column here, then I think it's something like hash if and we can reference something and say is pricing enabled and we want to ignore that price line so we cut that out of there and put it in there let's just see what that effect has on our tests well we've certainly got something that isn't showing so let's see whether we can make it show so this is is pricing enabled and that will be referenced according to this stock list view model so we might put in a flag here which is val is pricing enabled, which is a Boolean. And let's make that true and check that we do see the things in our output. When our approval tests have failed, that's a promising sign. Let's have a look, see how they failed. And lo and behold, yes, there is the price. Okay, so instead of defaulting this now, let's pass it in from outside. So we need to pass it in here and we'll go with true for now so we can see the effect. And before we go on, let's also see whether we can add a column to our data. So that will look like this one, but we'll have some sort of price. And again, we're going to guard that with this is if pricing enabled. Okay, run that. And now we have a column here. It has nothing in it because our item doesn't have that property. And let's see what happens when we switch it off. All our tests pass, which means that we are not showing this line if this flag is off. So now we've refactored to make space for a change. Let's write ourselves a test in our list stock tests. And we'll write a version for list stock with pricing enabled. Now, what should that look like? Well, it should look like the version we get if we enable pricing in here. So let's set that to true and run. Now we have a number of failing tests. All these original tests are failing because they've now got a quality column we don't want. But this one is failing because we haven't approved it. So let's approve that and rerun. And now set this back and we should have only one failing test to fix. Good. Now let's set about making this configurable from outside the list handler. So we'll take this false and make an argument out of it, which we'll call is pricing enabled. And now we'll just change the signature of this to move that up one. Okay, that will affect our roots. So we now have this false in here. Now we could just pass a parameter up at this point, but at the level of roots, there might be lots of these sort of options. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to create ourselves a new class. And we're going to call it features. And the one feature we have at the moment, but we expect to have others is pricing. And by default in our system, we want that to be switched off. So now heading back to roots, we could give our roots a set of features and we could fetch 
in here. Now then, main will be broken and we should probably at the top define what all our features are for a run of our production code. That's val features is our default set of features, which we can pass into here. Let's just build to see if anything else is broken. And of course the call to roots for in our fixture is broken. Well, that's fine. Let's add it in here. And then this features can be a parameter to our fixture constructor. Now, if we default this in here, to be able to see the default set of features, then everything will compile and we'll still have one test that won't pass. There we go, as predicted. And the test that isn't passing is the one with pricing enabled. So back to our test. And now for this one test, we can pass in some features. And that should pass. So now we have the ability for our tests to choose which features they want on and off. And our production code will just have all the optional features switched off for now. So that feels safe to push to production. We can commit it. And this is a feature flag, something that allows us to show or hide a whole feature of our software while we're developing it. So there we are. The feature flag will allow us to avoid developing on a branch. We can add all our pricing changes into the main branch, but only switch them on when we're ready. We still have a lot to do to implement this feature though. And if you'd like to see that, then please subscribe to the channel. And if you have enjoyed this, I think you'd enjoy the book that I wrote in that price called Java to Kotlin, a refactoring guidebook. Details of which are in the show notes below. Thanks for watching.